वंदे नित्य नंद सौरी सम श्री नंद नंद नाम वंदे शिवाय का चरण स्वयं गोविचन समाई तम ब्रह्मा वना मनोरम ओम ज्ञान तनुवंद स्वयं ज्ञान जनार शक्का शक्षर में तमी नाथ स्वयं श्री प्रभु नमः ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट जय जय श्री राय जय जय श्री राय जय जय श्री राय ओके So today I want to start off the talk by talking about secrecy, secrecy and bhajan. It's very really important, and it's it's we're very familiar with it because we hear that guya. The word guya means secret. Guya, g h u g u h y a m. Guya means secret, and gufa. Gufa means cave. It means secret. Cave. Gufa. And it go 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 and a gopi, go and a gopi means <laughs> secret. Gopi's love for Krishna is secret. So they're they're gupta, gupta, gupta means secret. Gupta go go that that sound means secret, cave, confidential, private. So we're worshippers of the most private thing, the confidential, illicit, loving relationship of Radha and Krishna. All the gopis, Radharani, all the gopis are married to somebody else, not Krishna. And they are running away from their husbands and having illicit affairs with Krishna every night. This is a, a, a moral and a dharmic by material si situation. And no one knows it. Krishna spends 10.30 at night till 3.34 in the morning, about six, seven hours every night, He's out in the forest enjoying with other people's wives, the gopis, Radharani, Lita Vishaka. So we're worshippers of this most secret thing. And Krishna introduced us to secrets in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9. He said, I'm going to start telling you secrets now. Arjuna, are you ready? Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam. The topmost knowledge is a secret thing, because the topmost knowledge is the knowledge of love. How to love Krishna intimate, intimately, heart to heart, love Krishna. Pranaya, prana, prema, sneha, man, pranaya, man, rag, anurag, bhav, ma, bhav. So intimate, so confidential, so hardly. So this is the love we're talking about. So Krishna Gita, he says, I'm going to tell you one secret. I'm going to tell you something more secret than the most secret thing. So the first secret, the first thing he tells Guyam, he talks about Brahman. Brahman is secret. Bhagavan is also Brahman. Then he tells us that Guyatara, there's a more secret thing. The more secret thing in Brahman is that Krishna is in your heart. That Brahman is manifest in your heart as a Paramatma. And the Guyatam, the Sarva Guyatam, the greatest of all secrets is that Krishna is a person and he wants your love. You have to love him like a person, treat him like a person, see him like a person, be with him like a person. Manmana bhava mad bhakto ma jaji ma no askru ma me vaishati satyante pratijane priyasya priya jana bhavi priya to Krishna Krishna priya Radha priya Saki priya we want to be dear to Sakis and dear to Radharani so it's all about secrecy and we see so Rupa Goswami tells us about love is secret also. In the fourth verse of Upanishadamrita, the Dati Pratigrinat, he talks about six sentences sad, sadguna priti lakshana, the six sentences of loving dealings, priti lakshan. These are the characteristics of love. Love is secret. What this is true love is secret. Transcendental love is secret. It's priti priti lakshan. It says, guyam prichati ak guyam akyati prichati. The word is guyam. G G U H Y M. You should inquire. You should talk about me secretly to your friend, and you should ask about him in secret, and he should speak to you in secret. Guyam akyati prichiti. Prichiti means prashna, means questions. Questions to be asked in secret about Krishna. There are any confidential pastimes. The Rahasya Sangha, Antaranga Bhaktas, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we had. Ra Antaranga Bhakti is in Shiva Sangam every night in Shiva Sangam. Thousands of devotees want again. They're all mistress, about the charities, Banerjee, Chatterjee's, Banerjee's, Chatterjee's, <laughs> all kinds of Bengali Brahmins, 
but uh, they wanted to get into the Sangha of Mahaprabhu because he was a great pundit. Jagannath Mishra's son, Nimai Mishra, he was a Digvijaya himself. He defeated Kesha Kashmiri. So I wanted, what are they talking about in there, Shiva Sangam? What, what's going on? I know they're doing Kirtan, but they're also doing Hari Kata here, having Bhagavad Kata there every night. Got our pundits there, Jagannath pundits there, Nittai's there, Waitis there, Gauranga's there. Everybody's there, Gangadas, everybody's here. Let us in. No! Open, open again. No, no, no Misha, no more Misha. We have no Misha. <laughs> he said, no more vanity, no more charities. God, no. So they got angry. So what were they talking about? They're talking about Ron and Krishna singing Lila Kirtans. They're singing Ras Kirtan, about Ras Lila, and enacting Ras Lila. In the, in the Pushpodya and gardens of Shiva Sangam. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a very secret, confidential thing. So, and it's, we're, the Sandarvas, because we're kind of wrapped up in the Sandarvas these days. <laughs> I read it once already, you know, my second reading of Sajid Ryan's book. <clears throat> but in the end of part two, the last verse is 340. In verse 349, he talks about secrets. This is called Anashay 339, Confidentiality and Spiritual Realization. This is from Bhakti Sandarva. From Bhakti, yeah, thank you. Bhakti Sandarva, Anashay 339, there's only 340 Anashays. It means like verses. Only. Only, yeah. There's 3,500 verses described. It says in the back, there's 3,500 verses in this volume. They're all footnotes here, they're all verses. Are, you can look up all those verses, there's like a thousand page index of verses. So he says, if, if, if by mercy one gets mercy of Guru or Krishna, one realizes some Rahasya Tattva, he realizes some confidential truth, regarding the practice of sadhana or sadhya, that should not be disclosed to anybody. Don't tell anybody. No, anybody means anybody, anybody, nobody, nobody. <laughs> and the same point is in the eighth canto of Bhagavatam, chapter 17, verse 20. It says, Naitat Parashma Akyayam Prishtayapi Katachana Sarvam Sapadyate Devi Deva Guyam Susamritam Devi Deva Guyam Susamritam Secret. So Vishnu is speaking to Aditi. He says, Listen, Devi. Never reveal this transcendental truth I told you to anyone, even if they ask you. All that is hidden to the devas, all that is hidden becomes successful and properly concealed. Sampadyate means it bears fruit. Falam bhavati. You get fruit. And a fantastic commentary I want to read because it such a Ryan is fantastic preacher and philosopher and writer and speaker. So he, he can say it like no one else can say better. And now I'm going to read from Prem Bhakti Chandrika. There's two or three verses from Prem Bhakti Chandrika that also describe necessity for secrecy. And he has a very nice, you know, right in tune with the modern scene. He says, it's very hard to keep anything secret and call you because everybody has a cell phone. Everybody's recording everything, taking pictures of everything. The guy's, you know, standing, uh, goes up on his roof in his underwear, hanging his clothes, and the next door neighbor <laughs> takes a picture. There's, there's some, you know, so and so in his underwear on his roof. And it goes all over the world. And he's a big guru or something like that. And he just ran out real fast, hanging up some clothes. He didn't think anybody was looking, but the next door neighbor it went, it went viral, you know. <laughs> Here's his holiness, three, whatever, in his underwear, hanging his clothes on the line. In the 50 degrees summer hot day in Delhi or something. So there's no privacy in this call you go. There's CCT cameras everywhere. You go to rob someone and it's already on film. 
you know, you shoot somebody, some famous Punjabi singer just got shot, and they have the whole thing on film. You went out to drive with the car, and some car fall has the car has the film that's in the car, the car falling, and passes them, they open up the back door, shoot them with 50 shots of machine gun. Finish the guy, famous Punjabi singer, Moose, Mr. Moose. Mr. Moose is no more. But, you know, it's a dangerous world, you know. Param param ibi param natesham. Danger every step. But at the point he's making, there's no secrets. He said there may be hidden cameras around, or somebody may be spying on you from afar. Like someone can park outside your gate, or even down the street, and have a dish aimed at your house, and they can pick up everything you're saying in your house. Even, even you know, without being in any recorder on your phone, they can, they can tap, you, tap your house and find out what you're doing, and hear everything you're saying. Every breath you breathe is take, recorded. You know. Google, Google Global is taking a picture of you, of the hairs on your head and the lights in your hair, you know. <laughs> so there's no secret. But he, so he says, this is a problem, because in spiritual matters, everybody wants to say, oh, I, I had this spiritual realization, I had this thing, I had that thing. Everybody wants to beat the drum about their glories. And it's wrong, it's, it's, it shouldn't be done. It says in Hari Bhakti Vilas, this is uh, Second Vilas, verse, one, verse 147. It says, one should keep one's worshipful deity, is this to Devita, is, is this to Devita, his guru, his Dikshamatra, and his Java Mala secret. Hari Bhaktivedas, second last 147. I talked about this one before. It says, Gopiya Devatam, Ishtam. Your Ishta Devata must be Gopiya. Gopiya, it says Gopiya. Gopiya means secret, like Gopiya. Gopiya Gopiya Devishtatam. Gopiya Devatam, Ishtam. Gopiya Guru Atmana. You must keep your guru's secret. Gobiyas Nija Mantram, your Diksha Mantras, you should keep your secret. And Gobiya Nija Malikam, your Java Malik, Nija Malik, Nija means your own, Malikam means Java Malikam. Should be Gobiya, she's secret. You don't parade around the market with your Mala. Anyway, yes, I was over the roof, I just walked on the roof in the morning, got some exercise. I saw some guy walking across the field. Sangri Asu with his Java beads. He's going to buy subsidy. He'll chant maybe half a round by the subsidy market. Then what happens? You know, he keeps saying how, you know, how much to follow the cup. I said, so what is this? It's just a show. It looks so stupid. A guy walking down the street. Why don't you just walk down the street with a bag in his shoulder going shopping, boss? You know, you have to have a thing in your hand. Da, 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 da. You know, it's like some kids walk around with a water pistol all the time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a show. It's just, who are you, who, what are you trying to show? What do you prove by that? You prove your, how you make, you're so extra making offenses all my name. Your very deep bead bag looks like you used it to wash a car with it. You know, it's all dirty bead bag. It's not even clean. No, it's, it's a, so, when, so regarding spiritual matters, we should keep our realization to ourselves. Shiva Goswami says, the realization related to one's sadhana and sadhya should be kept secret. One may question, why should you keep your mantra secret? Why should you keep your guru secret? Your deity, Amala, could you get a secret? The reason for this is that one's success on the spiritual path depends on shraddha in one's guru. Depends on shraddha in one's guru, one's mantra, one's devata, and the process of bhakti. The Gita Krishna says in 4th chapter 39th and 40th verse, he says, those who have faith, everything is revealed to them. Shushu Shosha Dhanasya, that is a famous verse. Without faith, you can't get anything. So 439, Gita 440. So if one's mantras, if someone, you reveal your mantras to someone, so, oh, what, you know, I, have, I do Radha Rani Mantra, I do Radha Rani Gachi. Oh, really? I don't do. You're really special. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but if one's mantra and so are revealed to others, there's a possibility you'll lose your faith because someone may make some remarks. I say, where's that? That mantra's nowhere in Shastra. Your guru just made that up, you know. What made it up? Well, he did. Well, who cares? <laughs> 
No, it's not, it's not Hari Bhakti Vilas. Where's Radha Mantra and Hari Bhakti Vilas? Oh, gee, I don't know. Where's Radha Gaitri and Hari Bhakti Vilas? I don't know. So see here, bogus. Oh, I'm bogus. <laughs> Kurde, I'm bogus. <laughs> 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 Who said? Bhakti Joe told me I'm bogus. <laughs> I can't do it. It's to say that one. You gotta do it. Only gives Kamgatri and Gopal Mantra. That's it. And the Raya Mantra has a couple other mantras, but none of, none of our Diksha ones. No punch to that Doesn't have Brahma Gayatri. No. <laughs> Guru Mantra. You know, so everybody's at fault. You can you can think Hari Bhakti wants to beat everybody up on the head with that. Is it IGM or traditional, modern, neo, novo, whatever. <laughs> So basically, but the thing is, you might lose faith in Guru or the mantra itself. Faithless materialist may deride or minimize the process and the goal of sadhakas. Because he's talking to some materialist, say, what's your goal? I want to be a little mandri. A little mandri? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to be a little 12 year old girl running around behind me, running around. What? That's stupid. What? Crazy. Who's teaching this kind of stuff, you know? Why don't you just get some Barbie dolls? You know, you're 35 years old, play with Barbie dolls. You think anybody you think that's a good idea? Think you're crazy. You're 35 years old. You get Barbie and Ken and start having Rasulia with Barbie and Ken dolls. I mean, this is, you know, so few will make fun of you. So you don't tell them. They may present arguments to support their opinions, and your psychists have no answer. This is the symptom of the Vaishnava prior Kanishtha Bhakta. He doesn't have the strength of, of tattva to defend himself. So the practitioner may hide some doubts within them, and these arguments may activate their doubts. Those who follow some other path, like Gyan Marg, or they may make negative pro comments about the process of bhakti, or even cite scriptures to prove their point. All this will weaken one's shraddha. We may conclude that one's mantra or process is, is not anything special. So there's two problems with the reason that secrecy is encourages to protect the faith of the devotee. Protect the faith in the guru, to protect the faith in the process of bhakti and the goal, sadhana and the sadhya, and protect the faith in Bhagavan as a person, and protect the faith in the guru and the mantras he's given you. Faith is every, faith is the base of everything. Everything is faith. Faith is gone, everything is gone. So we should protect it at all costs. So after concluding this, whole treatise, two volumes, 339 verses. He says, this is all secret, everything I tell you keep secret. Keep your mantra, keep, keep your son secret. Because, you know, especially you get Sibranali or you're following Rock Mark and other, other people aren't. But then they say, what are you, you have Sibranali? You say, I don't know, I don't know. Just, just avoid it, don't even, don't even get into it. It's, I'm just doing bhakti, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to chant my rounds, you know. Because we always want to get protesto. We always want to think, I'm special. yeah, I'm doing rock bhakti, yeah, I'm really special. Oh, wow, well, you're can I get your autograph? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll buy a bhakti, can you sign it for me? So the one thing is to protect our shraddha, and the other is to protect us from the most pernicious, pernicious uh, anartha, which is pride. Dumba. Dhamma is in the 16th chapter of Gita is a quality of the demons. <laughs> Darpa, Dhamma, Dhamma, pride, Ankar. The Lord Sajani is the enemy of Ankar. Gauri Vaishnava, we can hide Ankar. Trinata, peace, and Echena, Trori Vasishna, Amani, Amani, Dena, Kirsna, Amani. No ma, no self-respect, no, we're not special of anything. We're dots. Everybody, everybody's dots. Like, well, sometimes we will get stopped and traveling sangers on, uh, on the, well, get stopped with the cops, we're going too fast. And he said, what's your name? My name is Christian Dots. He said, where do you stay? I live in Wasika Avenue. He doesn't have a license, because sometimes we don't have a license. Because guys, international people come in this con, and they're from Russia, and they're, they're just driving the van, they don't have a license. He said, I have my license in the temple. What's your name, Krishna? Said, okay, he makes a ticket. 
you know, hundred bucks ticket, Krishna's. So then the police come to the temple. So we're, they got about 50 tickets with them. And all of them say, Mr. Das. <laughs> they say, we're looking for Mr. Das. Who's Mr. Das? There's 300 Mr. Dases here. Which Mr. Das? Oh, I don't know. It's just a Mr. Das. <laughs> I thought that he said, is Mr. Das there? Yeah, Mr. Das lives. 3762 West Seeking Avenue. There's 300 Mr. Das here. Which one? I don't know. It's just a Mr. Das. <laughs> We we got a hundred dollar fine. Okay, we'll take we'll process it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the whole thing. Das tana das tana das. So this pride, he said. This. So what happens? One may be proud of one's mantra or process or progress. This may give rise to arguments, to disrespect, and offenses. Because you meet somebody in IGM or something. Are you practicing? Yeah, I'm practicing my mantra. You. If you, don't, if you don't worship a rock mark, you can't sing around Christian. Really? Yeah. She, what's going to happen to me? I don't know. You're in bad trouble, you know. <laughs> Says and she's not in charge of media. You don't follow rock mark, you're going to my like, I go to my quiz. Oh, no, go to my quiz. Well, I'm worshiping around Christian. No, you're going to my quiz. Look, you're ready. You're out of this. You know, go to my quiz. <laughs> yes, tell you about Vishnu. It's rock mark. You know. <laughs> Doesn't give you a way out. He just hangs, you know. So it gives rise to arguments and respect and offenses. Pride is one of the biggest obstacles in bhakti. So that's, we shouldn't become, this is one of the anarthas that arises from bhakti itself. From we're performing bhakti and anarthas can arise from bhakti, one has to be proud of my accomplishments. This is told by Vishnu uh, Madhuri Kanamani. Becomes proud of one's advancement. More, if one reveals one's practice or progress to others, some people may become impressed and start honoring that person, which can lead to a fall down. So this is he quotes the Panchatattra, which is pretty, pretty common quoted. What's commonly quoted is this last line here, next page: Yadrishi Bhavana Yasya Stira Bhavati Tadrishi. Jishi, Jishi means to see. Vavana means your thought. The thought that you have, the thought that you're seeing or in your mind, Siddhi Bhavati Tadrishi, you'll see that in a state of perfection if you do this. And it says, Mantra, Tirtha, Drije, Devi, Deva, Gyabesha. In other words, if you want to attain success in your practice, you must always have faith in your mantra, your holy place, the Tirtha a brahmana, your takraji, and a guru. Your success is uh, your drishi, your what you to perfection you see depends on your faith. So that's why Sazarayan quoted the fact that if you, faith gets broken by exposing. So just, just take a humble path, or so take a humble path. I heard you're in the Ragmar, you're following that bogus Babaji, you know. Miracle and following Raghavan. No, I, I'm not just saying Hare Krishna and reading Gita and Bhagavatam, that's all. Oh, somebody said, I don't know what they said. On, on the horse, right, take it from the horse's mouth. We have a phrase like that in America. Straight from the horse's mouth. I need to know the horse is speaking, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Horses don't speak too much, but they, they, you got that expression. Straight from the horse's mouth. Well, the Ritchie had a horse head and he explained the. Narayan Kavacha to the... Oh, Maharaj. yeah. So that's where the expression comes from. It comes from, from the Vedas. Yeah, well, I agree. I agree. Madhu and Kaita stole the Vedas from Brahma when he was sleeping. And Krishna took the form of High Agriva and got to recover the Vedas. High Agriva Avatar. He spoke all the Vedas back to Brahma. So we heard it from the horse's mouth. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I agree with it straight from the, the Vedas came straight from the horse's mouth. That was a good thing. This is Spring Bhakti Chandrika, verse 115. Goop, goop, shakes 115, Spring Bhakti Chandrika. Gupate sad sadi vi siddhi sadhana navada bhakti. We should attain perfection and secrecy by practicing the nine lands of bhakti. This is the essential objective of Raganuga 
Sagas Bhajan. Attain perfection in secret. Gubate Sadive Siddhi. Gubate Sadive Siddhi. Attain perfection in your sadhana in secret. What does this mean? I'll turn the page here. Try to turn the page. And read what it says. Not does his commentary. Attaining perfection and secrecy means the sadhaka alone meditates on its mentally conceived spiritual body, siddhadeya, and ser renders service to Radha and Krishna throughout the day and night. And also performs the nine times of Navadita Bhakti, hearing, chanting, remembering. So then he says, Gubhate Sadhave Siddhi. The sadhaka should not re reveal his realization of Bhajan to anybody. He should proceed towards Baba's city and great secrecy. And he, he quoted he quoted some some there's some other verse prayer it is Rako Prema Ridoi Rako Pre Rako Prema Ridoi Koibe Yata Tata. Don't speak about your bhajan to every person. Prem or it will be lost. The more the sake advances in bhajan, the more one should consider oneself a fallen soul that, he's not, that he or she is not doing any son of bhajan. He will humbly and anxiously pray for Krishna's mercy to attain the fortune of solid bhajan. Such hank anxious and hankering prayers of the sadhaka will unlock Krishna's compassion. So this, the main thing is the secrecy. This, there's 120 verses, 120 verses in this book, and the last two verse, last two of the, two of the last three verses are about secrecy. Verse 119, Prem Bhakti Chandrika. I will carefully, carefully not reveal my bhajan realizations to any common person. May no one become angry or find fault with me for writing this book, because he kind of revealed the secrets in this book also. Mm. But, he, but then, he, said, then he, he explains, forgive me, I'm telling you not to tell any secrets. I told you so many secrets of my own bhajan in the spring, Bhakti Chandrika. What's going on here? So then he, think, he, he saves himself, his ultimate defense of the last verse. It wasn't me that spoke these verses. Karanga Mahaprabhu made me speak these words. I myself can't, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't distinguish between good and bad. Hmm. Narayan Das says, Prem Bhakti Chandrika is spoken by Lord Chaitanya by the mercy of Lokanath Goswami. So we see that the greatest books and the greatest teachings we have are all spoken by someone else. <laughs> Prem Bhakti Chandrika is spoken by Granga Mahaprabhu by the mercy of the guru of Narottam, who is Lokanath Goswami. Chaitanya Charitamrita, immortal classic of Siddhanta and Ras. It's spoken by Madama, Madame Gopal, Takaji Madama. And Govinda Bhasya, the fantastic commentary on Vedanta Sutra by Valdevi Dibhushan, was spoken by Govinda Dev. So the famous teen Prabhus of, of Raj Mandal are great pracharaks, <laughs> Madame Mohan, spoke Chaitanya Charitamrita, and Govindaji spoke Govinda Vasya, commentary in Brahma Sutra. And Prem Bhakti Chandra was spoken by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because he left, because he, his own Prema, because who can describe better about Prema than the Prem Purushottam Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And Prem Purushottam Mahaprabhu left his Prem in the Padma River, a branch of the Ganga in Bangladesh. And Narutam went there one day and bathed and got that Prem, got that Garanga Prem. So being invested with Garanga Prem, he was able to write the moonbeams of, to illuminate the path of Prem Bhakti, Prem Bhakti Chandrika. Narasan Das Thakur Mahasaya So goofy, gobi, gobi. <laughs> Secrecy and Vajan is the title of this. Translate that into Russian, please. Start working now on the translation. Secrecy and Bhajan. Okay, good. <laughs> Sounds good. 
Any questions? Okay, now we're going to try. Any questions? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Not a ride. But my first question is uh, actually this question I by Jayati Mataji. Jayati Mataji, you have a question. Can someone actually preach because in Bhakti Sandhat it is written that Krishna is given Bhakti? So what is the role of preaching? What's the question? Can someone actually preach because in Bhakti Sandhat it is written that Krishna is given Bhakti? So what is the role of preaching? Krishna gives bhakti, so why he should preach? Because anyway, Krishna gives. <laughs> Krishna gives bhakti. Someone asked a question. Since Krishna gives bhakti, why do we preach? How does Krishna give bhakti? He comes, you, you saw Krishna? He, was, he hasn't been here for 5,000 years, man. 5,200 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you get, you, do it your way. Get it from Krishna. He'll be here next three million years, three hundred million years from now, next day of Brahma. <laughs> Krishna doesn't give bhakti to anybody. Bhakti comes from the, the, the representative of Krishna, from the guru. So my question is wrong. Krishna doesn't give bhakti. Who, who got bhakti from Krishna? Brahma got bhakti from Krishna. He is directly he's instructed in the Bhagavatam by, by Krishna. Arjuna got bhakti by Krishna. Uddhava got bhakti by Krishna. Uddhava was already a bhakti anyway. Even before he met Krishna, he was already worshiping Krishna. <laughs> I don't know where he got. He's a parishad. He's a So that's... Krishna, when Krishna wants... Bhakti is independent. When Krishna wants someone, to, Krishna wants someone to get liberated from the ocean of birth and death. This is in tenth, tenth canto, chapter eighty-seven, I think. Tenth canto it says, when Krishna wants someone to get liberated, he arranges for that person to meet a guru. So when they get me, so it says, when I want to get liberated, Krishna arranges for me to guru, because the sequence is actually before that. Because I meet a guru, then I get liberated. But because there's so much connected. The verse is said, spoken that when Krishna wants someone to get liberated, they arrange for the Mita Guru and get bhakti. But actually, Krishna arranged this for the Mita Guru and get bhakti, but then they get liberated. But this too happens so fast, the verse is spoken that way. When Krishna wants to liberate someone. So Krishna wants to liberate someone, they'll send you the Guru, and Guru will give you bhakti, and train you in bhakti, and then you, get, then you realize Krishna through that bhakti and go to Krishna. What's the other question? Another que Anybody else has a question? No, another person. You asked one. Dajiji? Uh, Tired? No, I'm very happy to be here. Uh -huh. um, I've read in uh, Guru Darshan, Guru Darshanam, which is um, a book of questions and answers where Satya Narayana Yeah, I read that book. It's a wonderful book, very old book. And there, uh, uh, Sri Haridas Shastri, Babaji Maharaj, is saying that everything is in the name. Everything will come from the name. The form of the Bhaga of Bhagavan is his qualities, his pastimes, and also one's own svarup will be revealed by the name. And then he says, nowadays people speak about Siddha Pranali, as if you can get svarup from Siddha Pranali, like this. He says like this. So that means you have no faith in the name. You need something else to give you your svarup. So this is my question, how do I reconcile this with the fact that nowadays there's a fashion of giving Siddha Pranari to quite a few people, including my... Yeah, the question is about... I'm not sure what the question is, but... The question is about one 
Gauri Vaishya, spiritual master, famous person, Pandit Sri Haridas Shastriji, he says that the holy name is Krishna, is everything there, Nitya, Shuddha, Purna, Nitya Mukta, Purna, Shuddha, Vinatva, Namanamana, everything is there, it's full of representing Krishna. So what is the need for a Siddhapranali or some other process? So who, who argues against that? No one argues against that. We accept that, but we can also say, because there's two verses that talk about Guru, relation of Guru and Siddhapranali mm -hmm. in the Bhakti Sandara. One is verse 283. Mm -hmm. Verse 283 it talks about, defines what is Diksha. So the Diksha, a Diksha, the Guru gives Bhagavat Srup Vishesh Gyan and Atma Srup Vishesh Gyan. He gives specialized knowledge about the Atma of the, of the disciple and about Bhagavan, which comes through the Diksha mantras, Gobala mm -hmm. Mantra Kamgaitri. And so sometimes the, this is interpreted by the Atma Vishesh Gyan, means specialized knowledge about the disciple, means the Siddhadeya. And it's given the siddha, it's given a diksha. And, but that's not really that clear in verse 283 of Bhakti Sandarva. Mm -hmm. It just, it just says, gives knowledge. Because the IGM, the Skan Gaudi argued that verse. They said, this shows that it's, the, the mantra the Guru gives, the seed of your soup is given in the mantra. It's the seed like, then you do Bhakti Bhajan by Shang Nam and Shang Shudanam. And pray now and then the now will reveal your siddha today. You don't need to get it from any outside source, mm -hmm. any Babaji or anything. You just keep saying the holy name and a revelation holy name because you sit there. Because that Adma Vishesh Gyan is packed in the mantras of the time of Diksha, verse two eighty three, and they, they take it to mean that. Mm -hmm. But the, the one verse that they can't deal with is verse three twelve. On on a cheat Bhakti Sandara, verse number 312, section 3, subsection 3 or 4, it says, because in the new Bhakti Sandara, he just puts the Sanskrit there. In the old verse, he has the Sanskrit and English translation. That's the problem here. A lot of times I find, because I have the old one, which has the English, that he doesn't, he doesn't, he just has the Sanskrit. If you don't read Hindi or Sanskrit, you're out of luck. You know, he's quoting important verses, the subsection, it's part of Hari Bhakti Vilas, but he's, he just puts the Sanskrit and he doesn't translate it. Oh, really? Wow. But I had the old edition by him, which was not so, you know, his previous edition. And it's the English, he has English there, it's much bigger, much, you know, which is all much page of Hindi, Hindi verses. But it has a translation in, in English, like Gita, Bhagavad Gita. So I can read it to you. But, it's, but it, uh, this verse 312, this is, this is, says, yeah, he just says it's Sanskrit here. He doesn't call it translate. This is Bhakti Sanarva, verse 312, section 3, subsection 3. And uh, in the old book, is on page 1040, 1042 of the old volume 2 of Bhakti Sanarva of Jiva Institute, which I have. And, and the translation, which I have it by my guru translate, is a little different, a little more. It says, I worship the Gopal Mantra. While I, where I med I, while meditating that mantra, I meditate to develop myself as a specific person in Braj that has been, that, that has been instructed to me by the Lotus Feet of my guru to attain this city that I covet. Uh -huh. And it's, the, 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 it's he has a, he has a Hindi here, it says, Sakshad, Sakshad, I wrote up here in English, Sakshad, Brajajana, Vishesh, Mayam, Shri Guru. Because he says here, so while chanting the 18 civil mantras, some people meditate on a mantra and I have been taught to by my guru, I envision myself as directly a particular resident of Raj to bring about the state of city perfection of the specific Bob and state of which I aspire. I am directly serving with Jen and non Krishna. My guru translates a little differently than that. So and the way to translate. He is reading that the guru is giving the Bob. Yeah, the guru gives it. He says, I'm meditating, I'm meditating on a, a, a form of a. 
A meeting at Sita Day in Brindavan, instructed to me by the Lord Sri my Guru. So Sri Guru Charana. So this is this verse. The IGM can't argue against it. They can't prove it. This this proves that the Guru can give this to the day of. 312, section 3. This guy just says in here, it says, Raja Jana Vishesh Mayam Shri Guru Charaner Charaner Majisha Vishesh Siddhi Bhavati. Anyway, uh, that's that's the argument. That's the argument to prove the Guru giving Siddhi there. 312, Section 3 of Bhakti Sanara. And praying we see it's been going on since 500 years. And praying Vilas, Chapter 6, describes how Gopal Bhatta Goswami gave Siddha Pranay to Srinivas Acharya. And Jiva Goswami took Srinivas Acharya too, Gopal Bhatta Goswami to... Yeah, for Diksha. Yeah, it's going on, you know, Vrakeshwar Pana, Dhyan Chandra talks about it also in, in Gorgavinda Svarna Padati. The, the, the practice of gurus giving Siddha and Gaudiya Sarvadaya is going on since Sri Tanabhapu's time, by Lord Sri Tanya's parishads. It's not a new thing. Just some, some people are orthodox and Particularly, Haridas Chastri is very orthodox and strictly Jiva Goswami all the way. He hasn't been to the right or left. He doesn't see eye to eye with another Das Pandit or he doesn't agree with the Radhakun Bhavati's approach at all. Mm. The approach of Haridas Chastri is pretty much like Iskand. Mm. The Shari Christian, get realization of the holy name, and do a lot of seva. Do a lot of seva, guru seva, come seva. Let's say that. Don't worry about all this other stuff. Oh, you must be knowing that. There's, I have a lot of writings. You read all this stuff. And that's, I, read, I read a lot of his writings and his new, newsletters and things like that. And it is, it's a conservative view. But I'm, I live in Rodkin. <laughs> so, I live in Rodkin. I'm a follower, but not that that's funded. And my guru Dave also is a good friend of his, and so I follow a different line. So it's like there's two different conceptions, basically. Uh, so conception is one. It, the, the ultimate, you can't take guru out of the picture. The, the bottom line is guru. Yeah. Whether he gives it directly as, as Siddha Panali or he gives If you don't have a guru, you're not going to get anything. If you don't get a guru and give you the Hare Krishna mantra, and you take all your aparads and anarthas, you won't chant proper Shiva Nam and attain the perfection by chanting, you get your Siddha by chanting. So the bottom line is Guru. Without, there's no bhakti without Guru. So if you want, either Guru gives you Siddha or Guru arranges through the holy name to Krishna give you Siddha. Just like Narada Muni, Narada Muni, his story is so beautiful there. He was a young boy, he got associated with Sadhus, they gave him Shiksha. He just saved it and got Shiksha. He learned so much from them. He just started following whatever they taught him, whatever sadhana they taught him. They told him to chant on the Mabhavati Vasudeva. So he chanted and he wandered around. His mother died. He left her. He just wandered here and there and people fed him. And he had symptoms of Baba. When he had symptoms of Baba, Jiva Goswami he says, when you come to Baba, you're eligible to have Darshan and Krishna. And he'll prove his Narimuni. It's in chapter, uh, first count of chapter 6, verse 26 or something. 28, he got liberated. 26, he said he, had, he was in Baba. He was, he was crying. He was in Siddhartha Baba. He had darshan. He was meditating in the heart, and then he saw Vishnu in his heart. He had sexual darshan. And then he fainted, and then he came up. And then he, he saw him on the and he said, no, and then he heard a voice, you're not going to see me again. Then he's hankering, hankering. Then the next verse after that, he had sin as a preem. He said, he, the first, 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 First canon of chapter 6, verse 26, said he got Bob. Verse 27, says he got praying. Verse 28, the Narayan came by his spiritual body from Aikunta and took him to Aikunta. So boom, boom, boom. Bob praying to the day. <laughs> In three verses. Three verses, all the packages. Boom, boom, A, B, C. Uh, one, two, three, out. You're out. Bob praying, God. Bob praying, Gorilla Airlines. <laughs> 
Singapore Airlines used to be called Groot Airlines. <laughs> Jai Radhe. All glories to the traditional view. All glories to the conservative traditional view. <laughs> there's conservative traditional view and liberal traditional view, and there's no view at all. <laughs> And so, there's your view. So basically, whether the Guru gives it up or or actually manifests it in one heart directly by Bhav, rather than giving the details, this is a secondary consideration. And it may happen this way. Because anywhere, wherever they talk about Siddha, they have some, yeah, you, you, can't, can't, yeah, you have to find a connection with Guru there. Yes. Anywhere you see Siddha, they find a connection with Guru. Now I'm only connection of all bunch of gurus. Ch you spend four months Chaturmasi with all mystic yogis and saints and sages and Vaishnavas. That's heavy association. 24-7 sir doing service and hearing Hare Kata mm -hmm. from great rishis, not a bunch of, you know, Sunday feast guys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Two boxes of the Sunday feast preachers here, over a plate of olives. <laughs> Even Prabhupada, Prabhupada talked to Rishikesh and his disciple about it. He said, Prabhupada, the Guru doesn't give Siddha. If you don't get Siddha, how do you get it? He said, the Guru will give from there. I give from the spiritual world. Even Prabhupada says, the Guru gives. Yes. And Andrew, Andrew does. We talk about Andrew. 24 years, Chanting Hare Krishna Vrindavan. Three lakhs a day, two lakhs a day. Didn't get any realization of Siddha. But he had a dream. He had a dream in Prabhupada, and a dream Prabhupada gave him Siddha. He told his own words from the Vyasasana so many times. I told the story already. So he proves that the Guru gets to there because Prabhupada gave it a dream. So in other words, you can't do, it's not like everything you do, you build your own computer, fix your own flat tire, you know, fix your own computer, whatever you do it yourself, go on YouTube and got to get a walk through a movie, how to make a chapati, <laughs> how to make Rajma, Step one, step two, just follow the movie on the recipe on the movie and on YouTube, you can do everything. But it, it's not like that in spiritual life. You need to surrender to a guru. You have faith and surrender and dependence and everything will be arranged by Krishna. You get what you deserve. Hello. For a change in weather here. Yeah, nice. Again, going towards the good side of the world, good side of the thermometer. <laughs> Any more questions? Right, any net questions? Wait, wait. <laughs> who's going? Who's, who's going? You got the same question you have? Yes, yes, yes. I, I check him on Facebook. Okay, so Bala. Uh, thank you, Babaji. What is your advice for devotees who want to practice Ragbhakti and are in the initial stage regarding chanting and studying Shastra for people who have not yet found their guru in the bona fide Ragma what was the last part? Uh, slowly, slowly. Regarding chanting and studying Shastra for people who are who have not yet found their Guru in the bona fide Ragamartha Parivar. Bona fide Raganuga Parivar? What's the Raganuga Parivar? I, 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 I don't know what Ragmark Parivar is. <laughs> I heard Nityananda Parivar. I heard Waita Parivar, Nityananda Parivar, Gadara Parivar, Nokanath Parivar, Naratam Parivar, Shanana Parivar. I never heard of that. The parivar means family. Family of Bhakti Siddhanta. It's kind of family of Bhakti Siddhanta. Family of Prabhupada. Prabhupada family. They suck like that also. They say Prabhupada's family. That's right. Parivar means family. Well, I never heard of Rog Mark family. <laughs> where is that? I don't know. I don't know where it is. I, I can't tell. About that. It's on Facebook. Hmm? It's on Facebook. 
Facebook. Sur un Facebook. Ah. Oui, sur un Facebook. Oui, sur un Facebook. Oui, sur un I, yeah, this, anyway, the question, basically the question, the person interested in Raghunaga Bhakti, he, he's not, he wants something he doesn't have, he wants to know how to get what he wants, basically. So to get Raghunaga Bhakti, you should read books written by Raghunaga Bhaktis and hear lectures by Raghunaga Bhaktis. So the best books I've ever read in English about, about, from Raghunaga Bhaktis about Raghunaga Bhakti and the subject of Raghunaga Bhakti are published and written by Sri Anantadas Panditji. Panditji Anantadas from Radhakun. He's gone to Goloka Vrindavan to do his Nitya Seva as a Mandri. With his Guru Kundri Hari Goswami and his Mandri Srup, Saki Srup, Saki Guru Srup. His books in English are great because his books are the books of the Goswamis. Bhakti Sandarva, he gave comments and Prem Bhakti Chandrika, Rara Sunni, Bala Kusumanjali, and so many other books of his own, Guru Vigyan, Guru Vigyan. So you read the books of Anantas Babaji to start with, that would be a good help. I hear lectures on YouTube, lectures where people are lecturing about Prem, any, any modern Gaudiya Vaishnava guru that's speaking on Prem Bhakti Chandrika, or speaking on Vrindavan Mahi Mamrita, or speaking on Bala Kusumanjali, or speaking on Radha Siddhi, it should be something about Rag Marg there. As these books are about Raghunaga Bhakti and the subject of Raghunaga Bhakti. So you hear lectures on these books and you read these books in translation commentaries by Nandas Babaji. That will help you develop Rag Bhakti. Some other question? Uh, offline or on, wherever we are. <laughs> yeah, direct question. <laughs> yes. Not doing too much or greed or whatever. Uh, well, I couldn't hear so much the question. Right, uh, what if a devotee is unable to follow uh, Vaidhi Bhakti Nanda nicely, but still he has some greed to listen to Pandita What does that mean? Vaidhi. What is nicely? Uh, he can't follow nicely means what? Mm -hmm. Vaidhi Bhakti means hearing and shining about Krishna. What's the problem with that? It's not about numbers. You, you do some bhakti every day. You're doing body bhakti. Do whatever you can. You're doing okay. Whatever well, you can chant, you should do. Whatever you do should be sankhya. Sankhya purva ganama gana to be. Should be every day. You should chant a fixed number of rounds. Four rounds, two rounds, fixed number of rounds every day without fail. It'll help you control your mind, get mental strength by having a number. And chant without offenses and chant with a feeling. That's even better. But a fixed number is required every day. And you read Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad every day. Over your food, what more do you want to do? Do you have an interest to read about Radha Krishna? Then you read about Radha Krishna, but there's no harm. The first book Prabhupada published in 1969 is Krishna book. 1970, Nectar of Devotion. It's full of Leela. whole back half of the book is all Leela. The amazing Leelas. Fine, Leo, that's really good, Leo. 1969, one of the first books he published, Krishna book. It's all Vrindavan, Ras Leela, Veno Geet, Pranay Geet, Brahmar Geet. What could be more intimate than that? Reading it every night, taking hot milk and puffies, <laughs> Muli and hot milk and hearing Ras Leela, great. 1974, L.A. is a bhakta. 
The ring rust I said, Rust Phil, cool, okay, good day. <laughs> Dream about Rust Phil, it's nice. Dancing on the LA beach with my girlfriend or something. <laughs> something. Something like that. You know, you put it together and make your own version of it. You know? <laughs> it's Christmas Rust Phil on the beach. We have a beach right there in my, Santa Monica Beach, or just a nice flat. You dance, dance on the beach. All these books are written for boxes to read. Who are they who's, who's supposed to read them? So who's, uh, who's supposed to read them? Someone that's doing bhakti is supposed to read about bhakti. <laughs> there's no harm, there's no, there's no bar. What's the fear, what's the harm to read about Krishna? You're, you're interested in the basic a devotee. What is the basic, what makes a devotee? Devotee means someone who's surrendered to Krishna. And surrender is unlimited degrees. So whatever degree you can surrender, you surrender that much and try your best to surrender more and hear and chat more and serve more. Nobody's perfect overnight. No one's perfect after many lifetimes. With all these books, you take advantage of all these books and be happy. You should be happy. And great. I want to read it, so read it. Don't stop. Don't anybody tell you to stop. I said in my last class, Anybody tells you to stop, just hold the football on your arm, put out a straight arm, and run down the gridiron. <laughs> you run down the gridiron with a straight arm out like this, and if it gets away, you knock them out, you just keep going for the goal line. No. Yeah, you have your mind set, you have to be determined, resolute in purpose. I want to sing and get out of my way. It's not wrong, it's right. I want to love Ron Krishna, I want to hear about Ron Krishna. What's wrong? What's wrong on that? You're, you're Saji, what means Saji? I got a hush, I live with my mother in law, I'm married, I live in a park. Where's my Saji? <laughs> Everybody wants to hear me, you're Saji, a funny figure, Saji, 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 Saji. Saji. <laughs> yes, there's no question, no, nobody about Vaishnava is in your other code. because they're all Saji yeah. of Yeah. Right? Yeah. We've had this somewhere. Yeah, we're all Saji. <laughs> Rasaja means natural. Everyone talks about natural foods. And everything. So everybody wants to eat natural foods, Rasaja. <laughs> 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 okay, Raisha. <Rai> Krishna Vara. <laughs> <laughs> Nitai Gora Raisha and Japa Hare Krishna. Okay, why? Well, well, <laughs> When we first came to ISKCON, the only guest house in 1977, the only guest house Ron Riti was Christian Baum guest house. There was no other guest house anywhere. It was, you know, a pretty empty place for Ron Riti. And right by Christian Baum ashram, there was one ashram, I mean, Christian Baum guest house, there was one ashram, and it was uh, Ram, Ram Charan Baba. Ram, Ram Charan Baba. Ram Charan. Nitai Gaur. Nitai Gaur Rai Shah and Jabba Hare Krishna. And they had a big, big speaker. And all night long they're chanting. So I'm lying in the guest house, Krishna Baba, this kind of guest house. Nitai Gaur Rai Shah and Jabba Hare Krishna. And all that, everybody's in the guest house seeing it, getting brainwashed, you know. <laughs> and you wake up in the morning, you're supposed to chant Jabba, you're saying, Nitai Gaur Rai Shah. <laughs> it was so, it was just going on and on. And then after about 10 years, from 19, that was 1977, by, 80, by 85, 87, they stopped their loudspeaker or something. Got broke, and they stopped. They didn't, they're still there, but they didn't make any noise. But they sold their ashram, I don't know. That was really funny. <laughs> <Don't go right. laughs> any questions? Yeah. Chaitanya put his uh, hand on the mouth of Ramananda Roy when uh, Ramananda Roy wanted to speak about uh, Prima Vilasa. Why Lord Chaitanya put his, uh, his hand on the mouth of Ramananda Roy? I never understand this. Your question is why when Ramananda, Ramananda Samva chapter 8 of Madhya Leela 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy talked about bhakti and talked about rag bhakti and Rara Prem, Krishna Prem, Rara Krishna Prem, Ragnuga Bhakti. And he finally got to the subject of Prem Vilas Vivart and Lord Chaitanya put his hand on Ramananda Roy's said no more. Because the, the Vivart means transformation. So if Ramananda Roy was going to describe Prem Vilas of Radha and Krishna, then Lord Chaitanya would, would have an amazing transformation. He would lose his consciousness. That would be the end of the discussion. And he didn't want, and he didn't want this to be revealed more than this. That, he revealed enough to keep you busy. <laughs> There's 270 verses before that verse. The whole teaching of Ragmarg and Radha Tava and Krishna Tava, Radha Prey and Krishna Prey, it's all there in Ramana Sambhad. Usually I just saw that and when you're qualified to experience and serve Radha Krishna's Prey, you lost your heart, that will be when you attain Prema. Then you can be part of that experience. Until then, there's no need to hear much about Prey, you lost your heart. Fools rush in or angels dare not. <laughs> a phrase like that. <laughs> rush in or angels fear to pray. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's short. Dare not. <laughs> Fools rush in or angels dare not. Fear not to tread. More exact. Questions? Guyam Akyati Vrichiti. I'm sorry, Baba. Can we re reveal our secrets uh, to, to, to our Sangha, to close friends? The question is, can we reveal our Sangha to our close friends? Why do you want to reveal? Do you like to keep secrets? To inspire. What is it? I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't buy it. Usually, people say they want to advertise their glories to inspire somebody else. But I. I think we we're not. We we don't. We have a custom to bang our own drum. As conditioned souls in the age of false pride, we're living in an age of false pride. So we're accustomed to banging, beating our own drum. Boom, 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 boom. You know, if I walk around a big bass drum, everyone's going to take notice. You know, I can't lift it, but anyway. If I can lift a big bass drum, or boom, who's making all that noise? Go for it. What do you want? What do you want to say? I just make noise. <laughs> Get attention. So, because we don't want to be humble. We don't like humility. We don't like to be nothing. You know, I'm nobody, I'm nothing. No, I'm somebody, man. And there's so many courses on think rich, think you're, think you're rich, think you're big, be big, big, be tough, be strong, be courageous. They have all these leadership courses and master, master classes. Become a master, become a leader, all this emphasis, all that. It's all a bunch of BS, you know. <laughs> it's all Carl Yuga's trick to send everybody to hell, to inflate everybody's false ego and hunkar and make everyone farther and farther removed from God. The more we think we're nothing, the better off we are. We should think, I have no, I have no qualification, I have no adhikar, I don't deserve anything I've gotten. I've gotten so much mercy from my guru, from Krishna, I don't deserve it. I'm a dog, I'm worthless. I'm demonic, I've got so many bad desires and so many wrong ideas. And You know, you see me crying for Krishna, you see me feeling separation from Krishna. You see me dreaming about Krishna. When? Never, never. Heart is dry, bone dry. So what do we got to talk about? I chant 60 rounds. I do near Jayakasi. I stand on my head and spit wooden nickels. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have a phrase like that in America. So I was really proud. You see, you can do anything. The guy said, yeah, I said, okay, stand on your head, it's fit wooden, it's fit wooden nickels. 
Nickel is five cent coin. Five cent coin is called a nickel in English. So he says, stand here and spit wooden nickels. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. I keep blowing bubbles. <laughs> Get it off bubbles. bubbles. <laughs> I, I, I've heard it so many times, like some, one time someone's talking about all the good stuff and stuff. Edwards asked him, what are you talking about? I try to inspire the new ways. I said, well, I think you're just, this, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like going for this stuff. I don't like this stuff. I was with my guru for 30 years. He never once talked about himself. He, when I wanted to write about him, I asked him so many questions. I said, what's the point? What do you want to know about me? What do you want? What is your big thing? You know. I'm, I'm, who am I? What do you want to know about me? No, but you know, you've got your devotees want to know about your life and your, your two different styles you've had and the things you learned and the place you did Bhajan and Revelation to that. That has nothing, don't this do Bhajan. What is this nonsense? <laughs> he didn't want to hear about it. But nowadays, somebody wants to interview us about ourselves, we'll talk for days, you know. I want to hear you about my, your life. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm ready. I'll talk. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Whatever you are is what you are. Well, what you are is what people think of you. <laughs> That's all. What people feel about you, what people think about you, what you say, what they say about you when you're not there, that's what you are in the world. You may think you're something else, but your reality exists, and the reality of the de definition of what you are is defined in the heads of other people. <laughs> So everybody wants to create an impression, you know, make an image, create an impression, wear a fancy cloth and look really cool. <laughs> Get a special thing, I remember his shoulders, Jai Rai, Jai Rai, Jai Rai. In ancient times, in ancient Indian culture, it was considered bad manners to talk about yourself. And the culture of India was considered bad manners to glorify yourself and talk about yourself. But now everyone's always me, me, I did this, I did that. What have you done in your life? What's your bio data? Where do you want to go? Oh, I graduated from here with this, I did that, blah, 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 blah. Big long list of your qualifications. <laughs> You're qualified to go to hell. Good luck. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> You're qualified to go down. Here's a ticket. No char no extra charge. No GST. No CST. <laughs> no, this this ticket is no GST. No GST. No CST. It's free. Tax tax free ticket to hell. I give them out. You 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 have you already got your qualification. <laughs> Go, man, go, 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 go. Just be quiet, sir. Wherever you are will radiate. What you, what you are will radiate automatically. Those stars does not have an advertising agent working for it. <laughs> Those flower doesn't have to hire an advertising agency or a PR agency. It emanates a fragrance. They make a sweet, flowery fragrance, and thousands of bees come from 20 kilometers away to plant on that lotus flower. So my guru day told me like that. He said, become a lotus flower, and all the bumblebees will fly to you. <laughs> I said, well, I don't want bumblebees. <laughs> he said, anyway, become a lotus flower. <laughs> Be a closed one. <laughs> Close your petals. Keep your petals closed. <laughs> Only open at night. Be a night building lotus. And no bees are around. <laughs> Blossom at night. No, no bees will land on you. Because <laughs> they're all sleeping. 
sleeving these. Right, right. <laughs> and now you're defending yourself now? Uh, I, about six relationships between devotees. One, one of these is to share. Uh, oh, there's a question? Uh, yeah, like addition about this question. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, six relationships between devotees. One of these is to share, uh, like share realization or something like this. And to hear. Yeah, we just read that for next year instruction. Guya Makyati Fritchi, inquire confidentially and hear confidentially. Yeah. So you can, do, to talk to other devotees that are of your same level and sharing your realization, that should be done. That's in the Gita, 10th tenth, tenth chapter of Gita, verse 9. Machita Makata Pranas, Bodhiyantas Parasparam, Katayantas Chamanitam, Tushyanti Charamanti the boys get together to talk about Christian share of realizations that you should do. But I was just saying about trying to impress other people or encourage other people to do bhakti by telling about all the accomplishments that you're doing. I was saying that's wrong. Maybe I didn't understand your question. But you have special realizations, special gifts of Krishna. This is what should be kept secret. You can just talk about, you know, I'm Chang Hare Krishna, I'm feeling good or whatever. But some special thing that you get from Guru or from Krishna, you should keep that, they're telling us we should keep it secret. Narottama is telling us, and Jiva Goswami is telling us, and Lord Vishnu is telling Aditi, we should keep it secret. And Panchatantra says we should have secret, keep secret the treasures from Guru, otherwise we'll lose the treasure. And praying some food, praying some food, Vishnu says, if the, the light of not the light of love will go out of you, talk about it. The light of love is burning in the heart of the lover and the beloved. The, the fire the light of love, the light the candle light of love is burning in burning in the heart of the lover and beloved. But if you have to talk if you talk about oh I love you, then the light of love goes out. If you don't talk how much you don't talk, tell someone how much you love you, you your actions show how much you love, your feelings towards them, your attitude, your speech your treatment of them, you're dealing with them, show how much you love them and care for them. You don't have to tell, I love you, I love you, I love you. Because <laughs> that's also a nice once in a while. Sometimes you like to hear that mantra, I love you, you know. <laughs> that's one special power. Vastu Shakti. You never say you love me. Oh, come on, we've only been married for 99 years, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married 99 years, doesn't that mean something? <laughs> I just tell you, we're still married because I have a life insurance policy on you, or what? <laughs> I'm waiting for you to die and cash in your life insurance policy. No, but people like to hear I love you too, so it's, you know, we had this soft spot in our hearts, so what can we do? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> it's the magic. It's sometimes a lot, not too much true also, but. <laughs> like, especially when man and woman are first falling in love, you know, the guy usually has his mantra uses and a woman has the same mantra. I love you more than anyone else I ever loved. I can't live without you. You're my everything, you're my everything. I can't live without you. I love you more than anyone else will. <laughs> you said that 999 times, 999 other women, man. I got a recording playback on my phone. It's a well-used mantra. I can't, I can't live without, I met, I've counseled a lot of young Indian boys getting married. I said, did you ever say to your wife, yeah, how, how do you know that mantra? This mantra is universal, man, it's in every, <laughs> it's in every language, in every country. I can't live without you. You're my everything. You mean more than anything else in the world to me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's the keys to my Ferrari. <laughs> It's Kali Yuga, remember, it's the age of lies. 
We do have a, a free license to lie. <laughs> you get, when you're born in Cal, you get a birth certificate, you get a lying certificate. <laughs> you get two, when you're born, you get two certificates. In other ages, in other ages, you only get a birth certificate. When you Cal, you get a birth certificate, a lying certificate. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Dow? Do you think I'm correct? Yeah, correct. <laughs> well, you pay a lot of money to go to university and learn how to be a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Lawyer or a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, right, a lawyer. Then you get a certificate. Yeah. And then you get paid for it. Lawyer. Yeah. Lawyer. Well, everybody's making money making telling lies. But. <clears throat> From Shachon to Dimahi. Are you in that question? Yeah. Who's going to let me hear you say one? You, not you, you. Huh? You speak. Oh, yes. Shema Vinodin and Dasi asked last time. What? Yeah. But we didn't have time. It was yes. It was yes. Jai Shirad Gurudev pronounce. How does Guru Bhakti transforms into Manjari Bhava after death? How does a devotee attain his Manjari Siddha Deha in this case? How does Guru Bhakti transform into Manjari? Bob after death, and how does one get his mandri body after death? In this case, if that is person death. Well, the, the whole Bhagavatam explains how siddhas are brought to people at the time of death. The Jamiya got a siddha at the time of death. Drew Maharaj got a siddha day at the time. He went in the self same body. Drew Maharaj went in the self same body to Vaikuntha. Gajendra the elephant, Gajendra the elephant got a suit at a time of death. Narmoni got a suit at a time of death. Vishnu bought a suit at So one is uh, totally devoted to Guru, has Guru Bhakti, Guru Bhakti, you give you everything. Give you Prema, get everything from Guru Bhakti. So if you have, if you have Guru Bhakti and you die without Prema, when you die, you haven't got your suit at if you die and you have prema when you die, then Krishna will bring your siddhaya from the spiritual world and reveal it to you. And if your siddhaya is mantra, you'll have mantra bhava be part of your siddhaya. Bhava and daya are all one. Because the bhava, it's the bhava daya, it's not made of bones. And the body is made of bhava. The spiritual body is made of bhava. So what is it made of? It's not made of bones. <laughs> From Bob Dea. There was no loss. The Havi Krama Nasavasti Pradyavayona Vizya Sovama Vyasa Dharmasya Chayate Mahato Bayat. And there's no loss of diminution in Bhakti. Bhakti is all successful, all perfect. Because that same question is asked by Rishikeshananda to Prabhupada in 75 in Mayapur when they were translating nectar instruction. He was asking about Siddhadeya, because he was in Gaudiya Math for a few years and he heard about Siddhadeya. So Rishikesh Ananda said, Prabhupada, what if, you know, well, how will the disciples get Siddhadeya? Prabhupada said, Guru, who will give? He said, where well, the Guru goes to the spiritual world? How does he get? He said, there's no question of Guru not go, being here. He's, he, he's always here. He'll give from there. I'll give you Siddhadeya from there. Guru will give you Siddhadeya from the spiritual world. What's the example of that? That was Andra. Andra had his dream. Prabhupada left in 77. Andra had a dream in 2010 or whatever, 2005. Had a dream in 2005. Prabhupada gave his Siddhartha in a dream in Vrindavan Temple. I mean, in his ashram, uh, in his room. So, Guru gives. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, that's easy. Uh, some years ago, we have read uh, Jaiva Dharma, but not thoroughly because this was 
Sila Narayan Maharaj's favorite book. And in that book it's described how the Guru, the Babaji, he gives two different bhavs. He gives um, he gives uh, the, the bhav in Madhurya to Vijay Kumar and he gives Sakya bhav to Rajana. The two figures that are his disciples. Yeah, I know that. <clears throat> so my question is, my understanding is that the Guru has, has a specific, specific bhav in a specific ras, and that's what he can give his disciples. How can one Guru give two different bhavs? <clears throat> So he's asking a question about Jiva Dharma. There's a guru there who gave two different disciples, two different Stairatis. He gave one Stairati and Sakirati and one in Madhuryarati. Is that right? How can a guru do that? This is an innovation of Bhakti Yanava Thakur. Our Goswamis don't describe any of this such a thing. Most of the people outside of, outside of Iskand Gaudi Math, the, the Gaudi Vaishnavas, they don't read any of Bhakti Thakur's books. They are very popular because he has many innovative ideas and many ideas of his own through his logic and intelligent discrimination, deliberation, which may be very logical and sound very good, but they don't oftentimes agree with the ancient traditional teachings of the Purvacharyas, like Six Goswamis and Vrindavan Das Thakur and Vishnu Chakravarti. So I have never heard or read anything in Goswami books about Guru having two Stairatis. So I can't comment on that. Guru has one Stairati and his Guru has his, his Guru has a Stairati and he has a Sarak Rupa and a Siddha Rupa and his Siddha Rupa is in one Stairati and his guru is in a room, in one stairati. And he serves his guru in a sarak room, and he's in dasirati. And he serves his guru in sarup as a manjri and madhurati. That's all. I haven't read anything more. I haven't read anything more in any other books. That's the interesting point. There are many interesting points in Jaya Dharma. If you want, if you want interesting points, that's a book to find them. Any questions from the room? <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. So how can, like, slackening in the devotion, how can we uh, counter it? Like, sometimes we feel satisfied that I'm doing good and we come out of it and get involved in material. How do we, we become lax, become lax or lazy in devotion? How do we come out of that? It's tell that we, we associate with enthusiastic devotees and we get enthusiasm. We get enthusi by association, we get enthusiasm to renew our practice or to improve our practice. And also by reading. By reading Shastra, you get enthusiasm. Like, for example, sometimes you're not enthusiastic. You just say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to read, I'm going to read, Bhagavatam all day, all day read Bhagavatam. Go ahead and just eat a little fruit and don't eat, don't sleep. Read for 10 hours Bhagavatam. And after 10 hours, you'll definitely be enthusiastic. There's magic in Shastra. So lack of enthusiasm means a lack of Krishna. If Krishna's gone down and your tank, your Krishna tank is empty. So you have to fill up your Krishna tank. So chanting Hare Krishna, people don't have much taste for it. They have taste, you can share more rounds, but not many people do that. If they can, that's good. But the best thing is to chat and to read together. Read, read Krishna's Leela for one hour, then chant for one hour, remember the Leelas they read. Then read Leelas for one hour, then chat, remember the Leelas you read. And that'll make you feel very enlivened. So associating with the devotees, hearing Harikata in association with devotees, and deeply reading and 
study and reflecting upon Shastra will give you enthusiasm. A question. Yeah. Most, uh, for developing humility, pleasing to Guru and Krishna. What helps most for develop humility, pleasing to Guru and Krishna? How can one? How can one increase one's humility towards Guru and God? How to increase humility in relation to Guru and Krishna? Because it is pleasing to Guru and Krishna, humility, how can I improve? What helps most for developing humility? How to increase humility for, for Guru and Krishna? By service. Because we obviously humility is pride. Pride means, ah, why should I serve you, man? Why should if you serve someone else means that they're they're worthy of service. They have, they have some worth, they have some worth, they have some value. You want to serve them. So submit yourself for the service of Guru and Krishna and serve them, and then your humility will increase. There's no one usually no one wants to do anything for anyone but themselves. So to serve another person, you have to be humble, you have to submit your ego. You have, to suppress, you have to suppress your independence and suppress your ego. And so, instead of being in joy, you have to become the servant. Das so sweet. Das, das, and das. So render service, render humble service, and you'll become humble. We used to say, we used to say, we used to have the experience also. Someone said, how to develop humility? We say, serve out the Sunday feast. There's 200 guests come on Sunday. Wash your hands and feet very nicely with soap and water. And your fingernails, everything should be very clean. And serve with attention, care, carefully serve with attention and love each individual person. And it's two or three hours service that takes a big temple. And then at the end of it, you'll feel really good. You'll feel really humble. Have you ever done it? Anyone ever done it? Long ago. Huh? Long ago. Long ago. In the ancient days with new bhakta days. Yes. Now you're an old bhakta, old uh -huh. rusty, crusty bhakta. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're just rusty and crusty and not much bhakti anymore. Renew your bhakti license. <laughs> again, become humble. Again, become a servant. We become too big to serve, then we blew it. If people come here, they come to visit me, so I always give them a glass of water and give them some abrasad and give them an asan. And they all say, oh, you're a sannyasi, you're a you don't have to do that, you don't have to serve me, you don't have to serve me. I say, what, what are you doing, man? Don't, get, don't deny me right. This is, my, this is my fortune. This is my blessing, my fortune to do service. No, no, I was supposed to serve you. I said, sit down. <laughs> if I come to your house, you can serve me. This is my house, so you sit down. Sit down. Take this water, take prasad, take asan. Relax. <laughs> And how can I serve you? This is wanted. We should always look for service. I remember when we first joined, our town commander used to always say, he called to us and say, you want to do some service? Oh, no, not today. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, okay, well, I'll ask you tomorrow. Okay, I'll ask you tomorrow. Come, next, come tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow, I didn't I ask you to say, you, know, you want to do some service? Yeah, okay, I'll do some. What do you want? Okay, you know, clean the sagas on vehicles, okay. Yeah. So, 
So we should want to do service. Service is bliss. Seva is bliss. You ever heard of Nityananda? What does Nityananda mean? Eternally blissful. Nityanand. So you read about the glories of Nityanand and Chaitanya Chaitanya I read that chapter three or so. It says he was always blissful because he was always doing seva. Sevanand. He was always doing seva, all kinds of seva to the Vaishnavas and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is the key to bliss. Seva is bliss. <laughs> Got some more almonds for you. <laughs> Get ready. He, he of your karai. <laughs> Um, they're good, I'm eating them. It's my breakfast every day. Almonds, cashews, and mango shake. For now, another month. It's my breakfast. Uh, roasted almonds, cashews, and mango shake. That's good. Then it's about, that's about 10 o'clock, and at 6 o'clock I have chafati dal, soji, salad. And 11 o'clock, I take hot milk and go to rest. Well, good night. <laughs> nice. Cook yourself, you know, it's nice. This hand is a healthy hand. If you always eat from this hand, you'll be healthy. <laughs> if you eat any other hand, you don't know. Don't know what's in there. I don't know what's in my hand. My destiny's in my hand. So if I eat, if I eat from this hand, I know my destiny's controlled here. Here's my destiny, and here's my... If I eat from your hand, I get your destiny mixed up with mine. <laughs> Let me read your hand before you serve me food. <laughs> wow, what does I... <laughs> Well, I was had this Bengali friend. He was in Delhi Temple. He said, but well, in Delhi. And he used to watch movies of different saintly people giving lectures and stuff, and sometimes it's kind of always. And he, he was a really good palmist. He was an like expert palmist. And son of would be like this, raising his right hand. He has, he has, he has, he has he had a magnifying glass. He put it out to the, to the TV screen. And he look at it. he was reading his palm. He used to read the palms of the boys preaching. <laughs> he would tell me about different the boys preaching when they go like this, you know, like he reads their palms. <laughs> it's a really cool guy. He's not he's gone, he's not there now. It's everything's in your palm. On, online question. Mr. X. <laughs> Leonard Estre. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hi. Please accept my humble, humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for the good lecture. Question is, if I want to focus on Prabhupada's books, then for Ragamarg, should I focus mostly on Krishna book, 10th Canto? Can you please explain? Krishna book or 10th Canto? Can you please explain? <laughs> I want to practice Ragamarg with Srila Prabhupada's books. What book should I read? Should I read Nectar of, in Nectar of Instruction, Ubidesh Amrita, <laughs> That's verse 8, 9, 10, and 11, with the tikas, the commentaries, Nectar of Instruction. And read Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila Chapter 4, Adi Lila Chapter 4, <laughs> and Madhi Lila Chapter 8. And all of Antilida. And you read a 10th Canto of Bhagavatam, 10th Canto of Bhagavatam, Chapter 19, Venu Gita. No, 21. 21, Venu Gita. And you read Chapter 29, Pranaya Gita. And Chapter 33, 1, 32, 33. And read Chapter 46 and 47. And that's all.
and Nectar Devotion. Nectar Devotion, all about Madhurya Lila and teachings of Lord, teachings of Lord Chaitanya by Srila Prabhupada, teachings of Lord Chaitanya and also Nectar of Devotion, the last, the last chapters about Madhurya Rati, Madhurya Rati. These are very helpful books for cultivating Raghunuga Bhakti. Questions, questions, we have questions. <laughs> you have questions that you raise your hand there, or you're just holding your head up. Because <laughs> some people ask questions, they go like this. You know? <laughs> I thought you just uh, lazy, just raise your hand. Just holding your head up, okay, good. Saffron Wally. <laughs> uh, my question is about uh, um, uh, the carrots uh, because uh, um, I want I want to know better uh, uh, why we can't uh, offer to Krishna and uh, especially if this is only something that we do in Advaita Parivara or if it is uh, something that is followed by all the uh, ancient Parivars. What she's, what, what she's saying. Carrot, about, question about carrot. Why we don't eat carrot in Advaita Parivar? Or it's only in Advaita Parivar such a rule? Why don't we eat carrots? We want carrots. We want carrots. <laughs> we want carrots. million dollar question. Why not carrots? A lot of people are really attached to carrots, apparently. Bugs Bunny likes them a lot. <laughs> but what's up, Dark? <laughs> Jagannath swallowing him before he won't touch a carrot with a 10 foot pole. Jagannath doesn't eat carrots. Balaram doesn't eat carrots and Subhadra doesn't eat carrots. Lakshmi Devi doesn't eat carrots. Narayan doesn't eat carrots. There's a story in Purana, it's called Rakta Bij. Durga versus Rakta Bij. Ma Durga was fighting a Rakshas. Rakshas's name is Rakta Bij. Rakta means blood, Bij means seed. Every time she took her sword out, cut his head off, his head cut off, all the blood spurred everywhere. Whenever a drop of blood fell on the ground, it came up with another demon. So Durga had her hands full. She killed one demon and got a hundred more. So it's like, couldn't, couldn't kill the guy every time he his head up. So she thought, every time a drop of blood hits the ground, another demon comes up. So she called her Dakinis. Dakinis. Dakinis is like Putana, Pishacha. Rakshashi! <laughs> <laughs> they, suck the, they suck the blood of babies. And they drink blood. They like it. They're called Dakinis. <laughs> Durga doesn't eat blood. She eats sheep for son. She, she eats Vishnu for son. So they offer thousands of goats to Durga and Shiva. But they don't eat the, all the, their assistants eat the flesh and the blood, not them. So she called these Dakinis witches, or she even paintings of these in old Puranas. These witches are really, look like out of Bollywood or something. <laughs> she called these witches, and then she cut off the guy's head, and when she cut off his head, all the blood's flying, and it shows all these Dakinis with their mouths like this. And they're drinking, and they catch, they caught every drop of blood. So, so there, no, no other demons came up. But when the guy's body collapsed on the ground, there was no more blood. But when his, what, what, when his body disintegrated, fell on the ground, what came up from the dead body of Rock Beach was carrots. So, <laughs> carrots arose from the dead body of Rock Beach Hasur. So, when you're eating carrots, you're eating it. 
body of a demon rocked the beach. <laughs> so every bite of carrot hollow is a bite of a demon's body. <laughs> Make sure you add cashews and lots of ghee, too. <laughs> Demon body tastes better with cashews and ghee. That's the end of, of Carlos Calva, then. <laughs> no more carrots. So that's the story of carrots. So help yourselves with carrots. Most no good of I show is eat carrots. The only go to your eyes, John, is eat carrots are in IGM. <laughs> You're IBM? IGM. <laughs> it's not that way. Nitin and I probably were, get out of our every part of our, your part of our, my part of our, every part of our. It's not just a way to. The way to probably are is no good. No, it's, uh, uh, all basically all go to white shows. Everyone avoids carrots. You may say, find someone here and there eat carrots. You know, to, independence is always there. People do what they want. But it's it's the story is there in Puranas. Brahmins will recite the story. It's there, and it's ancient story. It's supposed to be true. And you know, I I gave up carrots. So it's not a big thing. I mean, you know, it's, it's, who cares? You eat something and go, you know. And you read stories in the paper all the time, so Indian guys you know, they don't drink water, eat any food, and they live 100 years. You know, there's a guy in the paper the other day, for the 78 years, didn't drink water, didn't drink water, eat any food. Just a regular guy, not some yogi or anything. So the human body can get by with, you know, very little. Hey, we, you know, what's the thing, you know? We don't read anywhere in a Shastra run or he's offering carrots to Krishna. They talk about all elaborate preparations Radharani makes. If she does, don't read anything, she's offering gajra or carrots. So you want to be cooking with Radharani, she's not going to ever ask you to make carrots. Say, I know some good carrots. Carrots, what's that? That's the rock Shastra stuff. <laughs> no, my guru let me eat it. What kind of guru is that with? Can I make it from Krishna? Get out of here, you sucky, get bogus. <laughs> you won't be able to cook with raw rani in an underground kitchen by any means. I don't think you'll find anywhere in ancient temples of in India, in Udafi Krishna, raw Raman, I don't think you'll find carrots in these temples. I doubt it. Nachi, Nachi, Ra Raman. Radhavavi, Radhavavi, I don't think, all these ancient deities, Rameshwaram, Jagadath, no carrots are there, definitely. I'm oh, sorry. You can offer a buckwheat, though. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can eat buckwheat, otherwise all the Russians will die. <laughs> No buckwheat, Russians will die. <laughs> Russians live on buckwheat. But for other vegetables, uh, like, uh, uh, yes, uh, red vegetables, uh, red vegetables, like tomatoes, uh, or, uh, um, I don't know the name in English, uh, these are vegetables that is very, very red. Beetroot. Yes, beetroot. Yes, beetroot. I don't. I don't want to talk about food. Ask me after class. <laughs> okay. Okay. Chan be happy. Okay. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> no onions. No garlic. No carrots. No leeks. No leeks. No green tea. No black tea. No green tea. Green tea is just raw black tea. Okay, any other questions here besides carriage questions? <laughs> Hello, what time is it? 5.48. 5.48, 12 minutes left. 
This is uh, karate or raising your hand? <laughs> okay, go ahead. I have a question about Kirtan, uh, Sakitriya Kirtan, for this translation. Okay, do your thing. <laughs> Pause for translation. Radi, 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 Radi. Okay, Bola, what's your thing now? Um, um, yeah. Uh, doing Kirtan, uh, which mood we should have? Because my mood is mood of separation. When I do kirtan, you, uh, you, I mean, kirtan, what do you mean by kirtan? I mean, you're doing kirtan by yourself, you're doing kirtan by others. Everything, is, everything we do should be considered kaladesha and patra. Time, place, and personalities involved. If you're doing a kirtan with a bunch of kids, you don't want to sing all kinds of yalap ragas and all kinds of crying moods. Kids want to be happy and play, so you should sing playful, happy melodies. You have to be, you know, the kirtan leader sets the mood. You know, if your mood is you're all bummed out, melancholy, separation, everybody's going to have a bummed out time with your kirtan. Because you're just crying, oh, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess. Uh, maybe you don't feel like crying that day, you know. <laughs> I mean, you have to see the mood, what people want. Generally, people like, uh, up, up, you know, nice kirtan, just nice kirtan, upbeat kirtan, good beat, nice mood. The heavy, heavy depressing stuff and crying your eyes out and separation, that's more solitary stuff or with select audience. You know, a lamenting, lamenting group. Well, the average kirtan should be uh, user-friendly for everybody. Should make people feel, should feel uplifted. The mood should be, I have to, I have to make these people, people happy, make them feel happy. I should share joy in my heart, the happiness in my heart, the joy in my heart. Your, your suffering and lamentations are raised from Krishna. That's your thing, man. Keep it to yourself. You know, suffering is, you're sick, you're usually sick by yourself. When you're sick, you don't have a party. If, got, if I'm sick and I have a party, anybody, anybody sick can come to my party. You don't have a party and invite 10 sick people. It's, when you have a party, you want 10 healthy people to come to have a party, you have a good time. Right, you have a party, you say, I'm sick, I'm really sick, I'm inviting 10 people that are sick and unhealthy, you come and join me. I get out of here, go to your own house and stay sick. <laughs> when you're sick, you're by yourself. When you're feeling good, you join with other people. Misery doesn't like company. <laughs> Usually, you suffer alone. When you're alone, no, when you're suffering, no one wants to be. Uh, they want to leave you alone. Let, let you suffer. <laughs> So Kirtan, the Kirtan leader has responsibility. He has to assess, he, has to, he or she has to assess the needs of the audience. It's like a performance piece. The Kirtan leader is a performer. So, you know, somebody, because a professional singer, comes out and sings all the loud songs, everyone's crying, ha ha. Everybody's going to ask their money back, you know. <laughs> I, 20, I spent twenty-five dollars in this concert, and you made me feel so sad. You cried all two hours, uh, you know. That's be practical and tells and you're you're a burned, bummed out and burned out about life or separation from Christians. That's your thing. Don't lay it on me, you know. <laughs> kirtan, sad kirtan. Anandam Budi Vardanam, Pratipadam Purnam Yaswaranam. Anandam Budi Vardanam, joy, Ayi, 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 And the old days, we didn't get into all this love and all this mood, mood, mood music and heavy, heavy moods and moods and one, two beat and dun, 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 dun for three hours and 
then change it to 2-4 beat, da 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 You know, it just, just started off with mad and it wouldn't matter. <laughs> Kirtan was fun. It was dancing and dancing more and more and slow down and dance some more. I don't know, the old Kirtans were great. I, new Kirtans, I don't like new Kirtans. It's so lazy and slow half the time. You're just, just, da da Krishna, da da da. You know, real, real slow, they take half an hour to get out of first gear, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I grew up here down the 70s, Vishnu, John, Agni Dave, you know, we, and Erdusrad, and Bhuivati, and all the cool guys in LA and New York. Enthusiasm, you know, we were like, we were all crazy, mad, energetic. Now all the Kirtan leaders were 56 years old. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare, real slow. <laughs> I don't know about you, I was so bored. Mara Kirtan, they put me to sleep, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, different tastes, different strokes for different folks. You know? When I joined, I was 20, 25, 30, 35, and we had a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of passion, a lot of craziness. And we dovetailed it all with Kirtan. We weren't so skilled and so musically expert. Everyone's like profiling well, who's more professional than the other guy, who knows more rock, who can out rock the other rock, other guy, who knows more rock than the rock in each, you know. It's really a funny mood now, the Kirtan thing. The spontaneity and the pure, pure ecstasy is lacking quite a bit. That's my general impression of it. It's too, every, everyone's so concerned about polishing your Kirtan. It's like all day long polishing your shoes and forgetting to put them on. <laughs> Any other questions? Last question. Yeah, it's, that's an sensible question here. Sir. Uh, Maharaj, if the Guru is more inclined towards the pastimes of Sakhirati and Vatsalirati, and the disciple is more inclined towards uh, Gopi Bhav and Manjari Rati, so how to reconcile? <laughs> <laughs> this is the question. This is your addiction guru? Yes, Mama's addiction guru, yes. Well, if my, the question is whether my addiction guru is more, likes more speaking about Vatsali Ras and Sakhi Ras, yes, and the disciple is more interested in Madhuri Ras, Radhakrishna, and Gobis, yes. what should the disciple do? <laughs> <laughs> I, you should take a shiksha guru. <laughs> uh, no, the thing is, Lila Kata has its own power, irregardless of the stairati being conveyed there. Lila Kata has Lila Shakti, Lila Shakti and Yogamaya Shakti. So the guru is inclined towards Sakirati or Vatsayarati pastimes of Mother Yashoda and Nanda Baba. Krishna and Bala and Sri Dhan So the disciples should hear from the Guru because it will nerd because all the qualities of the Ras, Madhuri Ras has all the qualities of the other Rasas. Like they say, Earth has all the qualities, all the five qualities taste, smell, fragrance, etc. The air only has fragrance, it doesn't have taste and like that. So Earth has taste and fragrance and everything. So the Guru is speaking Harikata. The disciple's duty is to hear the Guru speaking Harikata. And he's inclined towards Sakirati or Sairati. They hear that and appreciate how there's Sakirati, Sakirati and Vatsairati is also manifest within the context of Madhuri Rati. Radharani is also nourishing Krishna. She's feeding Krishna, nourishing Krishna. And Radharani also plays like a sucker with Krishna. Radharani wrestles with Krishna, Mandiravan. She dresses like a wrestler and she defeats Krishna. So Radharani, she acts like a tomboy with Krishna. They splash water on each other. So they do, they do similar pastimes. They play holy each other. So the pastimes of the coward boys and the coward girls are very similar. Sometimes even they play holy, the coward boys and the coward girls together. Krishna and Balaram and all their boys and girls play holy together as described in 10th Canada Bhagavatam. 
So the, the, the silence to hear from Guru is always beneficial to hear from Guru. And his own stereotype will be adjusted automatically. Needless to say, in his own free time, he'll, he'll want to pursue his interests in Madhuri Rati and read all the past times of Radha Krishna Gopis on his own. But he shouldn't make demands for the Guru to speak about what he's not interested in or not inclined to. He has a natural inclination or his own stereotype is what's or security. And then take advantage of that bob and that attachment and that advance and that feelings and try to absorb that and incorporate and develop your own bob. It'll nourish your own bob. It's always good to hear from Guru. Submission to Guru and hear Guru speaking Harikta is the most nourishing thing for Bhakti Bhajan. Because the Guru is your personal link to Bhagavan and Krishna manifests through the Guru. So your Diksha Guru is a very important, most important personality in your life. She goes to my emphasize that you to take a Shiksha Guru, it should be in consonance and approval, approvable to your Diksha Guru. And should amplify the teachings and uh, clarify the teachings of your Diksha Guru and shouldn't sh go against the teaching of your Diksha Guru. Diksha Guru is a great savior for the person. Any one last question? May season Khan Varashri to Khan. No questions, sir. Any other questions, sir? There is one. Who? From last time. Who's time? From what? the previous Katha. That's good. Yeah? Should I ask? I'll see if it's good. If it's not good, I'll reject it. Thank you, Babaji. Your lectures are a big support and inspiration in my spiritual life. What is your advice for devotees who want to practice Raga Bhakti and are in the initial state, uh, stage? Uh, reading, chanting, and studying Shastra for people who have Stay. not. Do we ask who have not yet found bona fide rock? Have we asked? Oh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I there was only one part. Okay, be quiet. I have somebody else. You have a question? Um, what <laughs> must be a perspective of seeing people around us <laughs> or in bad shoes? Like, uh, can you see them uh, asking for money and from that money they're taking intoxicants? So, uh, what? Well, well, intoxicants? Well, who got intoxicated? What did you say? <laughs> um, I heard, uh, what should be a person's perspective when they're seeing You're speaking about Brahmins asking for donation, or anybody? They are they're dressed as a Brahmin, they're wearing saffron clothes, or maybe white clothes, and they're asking for money, something like that. Uh, and the Holy Dhamma, I mean, the Shastras tell us and warn us to be careful with every, every pilgrim, every resident. The Holy Dhamma is special and should be respected. And what someone does with charity is not our responsibility. Our responsibility, according to Shastra, there are certain people that are qualified to receive charity, and what they do with it, it's not our, respons our responsibility. Our responsibility is to follow the Shastra, and we'll be rewarded for that. When we punish if we don't follow the Shastra. The Shastra Vidya Mutsri Javarta Tekamakarta. Thank you. That if you follow Shastra, you get happiness, perfection, and supreme destination. But if you disregard Shastra, you get nothing, no success. So Shastra tells who's qualified for donation. Who, who can we give a donation to? 
in the Holy Dharma and out of the Holy Dharma, you give, you give money, you give money or food or clothing to someone who's hungry. Someone who's hungry, someone who's a child, someone who's a, a lady, an old person, a lady, a lady, an old person, an invalid person, a sick person, an angry person, or a Brahmin uh, who has identity, has Chandan and tells you uh, as Brahmin threat. There's some obvious signs, identifying signs as a Brahmin. All these persons we can give charity to, and there's no reaction, negative, it's positive reaction. It's good, good plenty and security for us to give them food or money or clothing, anytime, anywhere. So if they meet these criteria, then we give them money. We don't care what they do. Because Brahmins here, we find Brahmins smoke beads, they drink whiskey. So we give them money, they're going to buy whiskey, they're going to buy beads. That's their karma, not mine. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm not, my, my, I'm not Yamaraj, I'm not the judge. I, I'm, a, I'm supposed to follow Shastra. Human beings are supposed to follow Shastra. So if I follow the Shastra and do what I'm supposed to do, acts of charity are never to be given up even by advanced devotees. Prabhupada was passing through Kesi Ghat in 1971. He was walking around temples, visiting Radha walked to Kesi Ghat, then he went to Vamshi, Vamshi Gopal Temple. He was with, he was with, he was with Gurudas and Yamuna and uh, Guru Kripa and some other devotees. Passing through Kesi Ghat, there were some Saru, Saru type people hanging out in Vrindavan. You know, Saffron Wallace, Sa Sarus, and they were sitting in a line, they were begging, and Prabhupada stopped and gave him all one rupee, or he gave him money. And Guru Kripa said, Prabhupada, why do you give them money? We shouldn't give a Christian's money to beggars. Prabhupada said, what are you talking about? They're begging, they're poor people, they're hungry, it's good, we should give them money. You're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about. So Prabhupada was giving them all money. So don't worry, you're, you're, you're just follow Shastra. If they're saying they're sadhus or saying person asking, you give them something, a little something. It's, it's much, it's no problem. And usually they fall in these categories. They're a sadhu, they're a brahmin, they're hungry. They say they're hungry, they want some food. But if some lady comes up to you at a traffic light, she's holding a kid in her arm, and the kid's got really fat cheeks, you know. He's like a chubby little fat kid, and she's got fat cheeks, and, and she's some Rajasthan girl or something. Oh, money for my kid. You don't have to give her any money. She's, got, she's a woman, and she's a kid, so she can give charity. But the kid's not hungry, and she's not an old lady. She's not hungry. She's fat and happy. She's just begging money. If you want to give her money, it's no loss. We should help people that need money. It's always good to give. <laughs> you never lose by giving. My philosophy, whenever I go anywhere, I always give. Because so few people, you know, how many people, if you meet 10, if you go out, if you walk outside your kutir, how many people are you going to meet you're going to give money to? You meet 10, say you meet 10 people, give 50 rupees to 10 people, it's 500 rupees, nothing. It shouldn't be cheap. If you have some money, you should always have at least some money to spare, keep some money for donations. Give a little something, buy, buy one less sorry, or every, whatever money we have every month, we should set aside some to give donations. It's nice to walk around. Like, I get all these coins all the time. You know, you get, when you go shopping for subject, you get, I have a, all vitamin bottles, I keep putting them in vitamin bottles. The yeah, plastic bottles, you know, vitamins and medicine, exactly. heart medicine, I think. So then on Saturday afternoon, because Saturday is supposed to give iron, uh, Saturday afternoon for Shani Puja, you give iron. So all the color coins are made of iron. So on Saturday afternoon, I walk around in Perkamar, I have these vitamin bottles, and I just empty, all these widows are begging, I just I go like this, doom, doom, and about 20, 30 rubies falls out, and I give them a the bottle too. <laughs> you know, I just go, I give them a whole bottle, and I finish off my change. I, I wait till I get three or four bottles of change every month or so, and I go and distribute it. Saturday, Saturday afternoon, four o'clock, five o'clock. And then you please shunny at the same time. You get the beggars, uh, give iron, iron on Saturday afternoon to poor people. 
shiny savvy, and you get your chair, you get rid of all your old coins. <laughs> it's a nice thing. And you're happy too, because usually people give them on Ruby, you go, because like an avalanche, they go, wow! <laughs> 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 the lady's got a, got a veil, she goes like this, and I, I go, <laughs> they want to be, I said, okay, you <laughs> should I said, okay, it's empty, I got another one, it's fun. So all my coins, I don't say, I just give them, I just save them and just them have a good time. There's a guy who comes, people come to my gate all the time begging for money. One guy comes all the time, he, he's a sheep rock. He, he, he always tells me how much to give him. 200 rupees, 500 rupees. So I just get angry with the guy, he's always, he comes every other day. So I said, so I said tell him all and give him on because he's twice a month. <laughs> so I could shut him down for a while. <laughs> It's just, it's just part of being, a, it's like grudge tax. Krishna tax the gobies, so Krishna comes back and all these guys are taxed the gobies. It's just part of Leela, just pretend you're in Don Leela. You're a gobi and you're in Don Leela and, and all these guys are hitting you up. <laughs> gobies are innocent, Krishna's always hitting them up for do donations. Give me some butter, give me some yogurt. You're making so much profit and material, all your butter, you ever give me some. Now you bum, get out of here. Give me, no, no, no. Oh. Uh. Don Lila, it's one Lila. So don't, don't become angry. Living in brush is a test. All our bad qualities come out and slap us in the face like a cream pie, you know? Take a cream pie, wow! <laughs> You live in you live in Rush Model, and all your narcissists will come out and slap you in the face like a green pie. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so don't be cheap. You know, you're you're cheap, you'll be tested if you'll be asking you money. I'm not giving that easy I just gonna buy whiskey with that. So buy give him twice what's done buy two bottles. <laughs> you guy, I want fifty rupees. You're gonna buy whiskey to fifty rupees? Yeah, okay, you take a hundred. Get two bottles, have a good time. Go positive. Don't don't wrap don't wrap yourself. You see, ever see Michelin tire? Michelin tires are French tire. It's a good tire, a Michelin, you know, Michelin. And they have a symbol of a tire, a guy made of tires. He has round tires for his arms and for his body. You know, it's a tire man, Michelin. You know, he's like a little stick figure. It looks like tires. So we have all these sh all these shells around us, all these Michelin tires, <laughs> negativity shells. We have like, like we get ladies put on one bangle, two bangles. So we have one negativity bangle, two negativity bangles, negativity, ne negativity bangle around our heart, around our heart, around our pocketbook. It's all we have so much negativity. We have to throw it out and counteract with positivity. Act positive, act lovingly, act kindly, act lovingly. Human beings were supposed to be charitable and help other people, not be selfish. Selfish is not godly. Give, give, don't be cheap. Oh, I'm poor, I can't give. Well, give, give a little, then give a little, don't give a lot. People should learn to donate more things, give clothes to poor people, go, go buy a sari, go buy a five, uh, 500 ruby sari. You give it to some poor lady. Again, the habit of buying things and giving charity. It's very good for bhakti, very good for devotion, good for the heart. Good heart medicine. You make your pies, save two extra for the dogs. When you go out and you go out on your motorcycle, you just throw, you, you just keep it in your pocket, throw one to the dog as you go by. Or a cow, actually. When you cook it, when first when you cook the first roti, you should go to a cow. And the last one to the dog. Huh? And the last one to the for the dog. What? Last, last one for the dogs. The last roti is supposed to go to the dog. I don't know the last roti, but. Yeah. I get rotis donated to me. I give a donation to a temple. They give me rotis. They give me six rotis, eighty-two. I donate four. I get some of the monkeys, some of the dogs, and some cows. 
But these are our friends. They're our friends. Monkeys came today and broke all the trees. So they did a nice job. <laughs> they did a good pruning job. They pruned the champak tree and bean tree. They <laughs> broke up a whole bunch of branches. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I called it a pruning guy here about all the sauce and everything, charging hundred dollars. Monkeys didn't charge anything. <laughs> Free pruning. <laughs> They broke all a bunch of branches. I came out of a slingshot, then they ran away. But anyway, anything more? <laughs> yeah, it's good to be. They, they always try to, tick, to cheat you because you have white skin, you have money, so you should pay more for the rich and pay for this. But really, if you don't get cheated in the dump, you're really cheated. Because if you give them a little more money, they ask you for more money than, than the rate. Then they cheated you for a few rupees, but you get the security to live in the dam, to take breath in the dam. So if you don't let, if you never let yourself be cheated in the dam, you are cheated big time. Yeah. Anyway, Krishna's the biggest cheater. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna's double cheater, double de dealer. Anyway, don't, don't, just, just go with the flow, you know. White skin, black skin, green skin, doesn't matter the skin. You have money, it comes, comes in your hand, it goes out of your hand. That's the way money is, you know. It's chanchal. It comes and goes. Our fortune, our destiny, most toys always have hands on money, somehow or other. <laughs> I never met the boy who walked around with rags, you know. Do we, uh, do we somehow or other they scan some money? <laughs> <laughs> they have some deal going on here and there. They always <laughs> Yoga Shivam Vaham Yam, Krishna maintains the devotees. It's really I've seen 47 years of hanging around the devotees. I always see, I've never seen a poor devotee yet. They always, you know, he's four, he gets things given to him. But Krishna takes care, you know. That's, that's our faith and that's our reality, that's our experience. Pradyaksha Bhagavan Dharmyam. Pradyaksha Bhagavan Dharmyam. Susukam Kartavavyam. We have direct experience of Krishna taking care of us. Big time. Jai Jai Shri. <laughs>